Welcome everybody to Sin City Living. My name is Jason and I'll be bringing you today's episode. As always, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. We have a ton of content for you guys coming out every single week, uh, every single day generally. Uh, occasionally miss a day like I did during the uh, rodeo that is still ongoing right now. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I hope all of our patrons out there are appreciating the the uh, patron-only exclusive videos we're putting out with the dice class, putting one out every couple of weeks. And uh, if you're curious about that, go ahead and check the description down below. Once I get this whole live stream thing figured out, I'm probably going to do a live stream on the patron site as well, one on the regular site, one on the patron site. I do have the new computer for it. Theoretically, I have everything ready. I'm just so busy currently with this uh, rodeo. And uh, a uh, one of our fans asked a question a little while back about ways to to uh, to tip us to show appreciation to us without being able to without having to to uh, sign up as one of our patrons and at the time we did not have any way of doing it but I have managed now to uh, get us signed up with a site called uh, buy me a coffee as I'm sure some of you guys have noticed from some of our videos Louie and I are both uh, pretty heavy coffee drinkers so if you're curious about that as well go ahead and check down below in the description as well. We would definitely appreciate any cups of coffee you're willing to pick up for us. And uh, don't forget to email us with any strategies, questions, suggestions, anything at all. We love shooting those videos for you guys. I actually haven't gotten a new email in about two weeks. And uh, also don't forget anybody that may be interested in one of the uh, small Sin City Living neons that we have, just email us that as well, SinCityLivingLV at gmail.com. Otherwise, gonna go ahead and get into today's episode. So for today's video, we are going to be answering some questions that were sent to us in an email from, uh, looks like Clark. Uh, yeah, I think it's Clark. Um, thank you very, very much for the email. We appreciate getting these. We love to shoot this stuff for you. We really like having targeted questions that we can answer for you. Also, thank you everybody that has picked us up a cup of coffee. For today, it's not... Uh, store bought well it's not you know going out to a store anywhere we actually brewed this one at home and it's just uh plain old uh plain old Folgers it's actually surprisingly good for just plain regular coffee although I will admit that I still use my candy creamers this one is a Snickers creamer <laughs> really good it's one of my favorites Snickers and Hershey's both have really good creamers um, that make uh make the coffee really good so what is this question? This question is something that we have touched on on, uh, on a few other videos, but uh, I'm sure they get buried down in the hundreds of videos we have. So it's nice to be able to, to be reminded of the things that it's been a while since we've talked about. And this one deals with comps and playing craps for comps. Because he mentions that, uh, um, you know, that he, he enjoys playing, playing craps and, and wants to know how the comps work on, on um, on craps. Now, the first thing that I usually say when I'm discussing comps with people is that, in general, unless you are a really, really big player, I mean, unless you're, depending on location, you know, there's some places where if you're if you're betting $25 a hand, you're a big player, you know, pretty pretty far off strip, but it's possible. Um, there's other places where if you're betting $5 a hand, you're a player that's going to get some notice and there's other places where if you are a you have to be at least a, a ten thousand dollar hand player in order to to generate any kind of notice from from them um but as far as generating the comps go in general you're actually going to generate less comps on table games than you will on on slots in general at most casinos and the reason for that is because most of the casinos, most of the ratings are, are strictly point-based. Now, there's some places that are not point-based where your card doesn't accrue points when you're playing table games. What, what it does is it just tracks your play. And then if you want a specific comp, you just go ask the pit boss, and then they'll take a look at your play and decide whether or not, uh, whether or not they, can, they can get you a comp. Uh, typically, those places have a lot more freedom and generally comp players a lot, lot better. Most places, however, it's all points. You just generate points, and you generate points based on your play. And what they'll do is they'll look at your average bet and, uh, and the speed of the game. For instance, let's say you're playing blackjack, and your average bet is $25, $25 a hand. And on average, that table with the number of players is maybe at a medium speed, and let's say they figure it as, as uh, one hand a minute. 
on one hand every every 30 seconds. Okay, so you're you're racking up basically $50 in play a minute worth of points. You know, now a lot of our a lot of players aren't playing 25 bucks a hand. A lot of them are playing $10 a hand maybe. So you at that point you're looking to say $20 in in an average uh, twenty dollars in play per minute, as far as points accrued goes. Now look at a slot machine. Look at a look at a penny slot that has say a five dollar uh, five dollar maximum bet, because most people are going to play max bet. And how often do you think you hit that button every minute? Generally, I would say you probably hit that button ten to fifteen times a minute, minimum once every four to six seconds would be my my uh, assumption. So you are now looking at anywhere between 50 to, to, uh, um, 50 to $75 of average play of points being accrued every single minute. So it's higher. That, and that's why slot machines generate points at, uh, at a quicker rate. But depending on the slot, depending on the casino, they also skew the points slightly differently for slots and kinos and pokers versus table games. Um, and this question is craps only. So he asks, other than the more you bet and the longer you play, what other ways would rate you higher? That's the first part of his question. Nothing. You are strictly rated on your play. For example, the $760 line bet rate higher than having $160 across. So well, you could have a $160 line bet or $160 across, including if there were a point. Um, are these rated differently? Absolutely not. You have $160 in play. You have $160 in play. That's that's it. That's be all end all. You were being rated on a $160 average bet at this time. Now keep in mind, if you do say $160 across when you were shooting. And when somebody else is shooting, you do say 54 or $64 across. Remember, it's average bet. Since you were shooting maybe one in six times, your average, your rating is actually gonna be a lot closer to the $64 average bet than it is to the $160 average bet. Same thing if you just stand. If you stand and watch through most shooters and only play a few shooters, there's a really good chance that your rating, your average bet has been set far, far, far lower than you actually play because again, it has to average out through every roll or your rating is being paused in between while you were not playing. And he asked, does buy-in matter? And this is something we've covered before. A lot of people think it does. It 100% absolutely does not matter. What you buy in has zero bearing to your rating, to how many points you earn, to your comps, anything else has absolutely zero rating. But I will say this, if your buy-in is uh, out of, let's say out of whack from your play style, you will get noticed. You, you definitely will get noticed. However, the notice, the, the, the notice that you will be receiving is not in a positive way. Um, for instance, let's say you come up to the table and you buy in for $10,000. I have seen this. I've seen this multiple times. We call this a false drop. You come in and you buy in for $10,000 and you make an appointment. Make sure that gets put in my card because, again, you don't actually understand how the ratings work and don't realize that what you buy in for means nothing. So you get your 10,000 and then you play $54 across. So you buy in for 10,000, but you're actually playing as the same way that someone would play if they bought in for three, $400. We realize that you're doing a false drop. You, you buy in for $10,000, but you're really only trying to play with a few hundred bucks, not realizing that you're getting rated for $54 in action. Your buy-in does not matter one bit. Uh, but you got noticed. You definitely got noticed. It's definitely got talked about to say this is somebody we need to keep an eye on because they think they can game the system. So got to keep an eye to make sure they don't try anything else. That, that one we don't have to worry about. That's, that handles itself. It's just it doesn't affect your rating in any way, shape, or form. Um, by the same token, you also have people that think that, that their win-loss affects their rating. And again, it does not. It's just your average bet. So we have players that say, Similar example, buy in for $10,000, but then, then when they think nobody's looking, slip $1,000 into their pocket. And then a few minutes later, when they think, you know, five minutes later, when they think nobody's looking, slip another $1,000 chip into their pocket. 
that way when they go to color up it looks like they've lost thousands of dollars when in reality they didn't thing is it's noticed it's noticed it's seen it's marked we actually do mark in in uh, um, on your rating that you know if you color up for 500 bucks but we know you have seven thousand dollar chips in your pocket you're 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 in the system you'll be out seven thousand five hundred dollars it doesn't really matter but Tracking the win-loss is still important for a variety of reasons, although it does, again, does not affect your comps. Now, uh, you know, if you go and you, you know, you lose $50,000, they're probably going to do something for you, um, you know, be it a, a hotel room or something. Things, things, there are definitely a lot of comps that are not dependent upon the points, um, such as rooms and, and spas, movie tickets. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff, all kinds of extras that are not dependent upon the points that your, your card may have accrued. So your win-loss can certainly affect stuff like that. Next part of the question, what about the odds? Are you rated on the odds? Let's say you have a $10 bet and you do $50 in odds because say the point is eight. What is your average rating right there? For most places, your average rating is $10. Some places may rate that that is a $60 average bet, but a lot of places are not going to rate that because the odds have no house edge either way. To the, to the casino, mathematically, the bet doesn't exist, basically. You don't have $50 at risk because it's going to win and lose over a long period of time, which the casino, of course, is always open. Um, odds bets even out. They, they even out. There's no house edge in either direction. So they even out over the course of a year, a casino doesn't really make or lose any money on odds, in theory. Uh, of course, there's always spikes in the, in the uh, statistics, but over a long court period of time, they all smooth out. So really, it's an invisible bet as far as the casino is concerned. It just doesn't exist. Um, you know, so this, this person, of course, mentions that, you know, that they heard that, that uh, the odds are not, not rated. And in general, they are not, because again, they... they there's no house edge. They don't really to the casino. The casino doesn't win or lose, so um, they're not they're not going to rate that as any kind of play because to them, if you play all the time, your odds are going to zero out over time. You're you're not really risking anything. Now, what about here's here's some interesting situations. What about a do we don't player? What about a do we don't player? Well, that particular bet has no ways to win and only one way to lose if a 12 were to roll. So out of the 36 combinations of the dice. A 12 would cause that to lose. So that right there, because there's no way to win and less than a 3% chance of losing, that player is most definitely not going to be rated for a $50 average bet. In fact, there's a good chance that they may have zero rating for that player until they see what else they bet. Once there's a point established, they're going to take a look and let's say this player does a do we don't and then I don't know, places the, places the six for 30 bucks. They're probably going to be rated for a $30 average bet um, because this is really all that they are betting. Maybe a $35 average bet, not even that. Maybe a $31 average bet to, to uh, make up for the one possible way that can lose on the, on the come out roll. What about if they continue with their do we don't and do a DC and a come bet? Or, even better, let's say they're one of those that does the DC bet when it travels, then they go ahead and place it, so they're trying to win $4 or break even. So in a situation like this, this player, despite having, right now at this very second, having $72 out on the table, they're probably only being rated for maybe a $10 average bet, and that is the fact that this can lose right in there, or win right in there, can win or lose in there. Because once it travels right here, everything kind of washes out. So they're, prob they're probably getting a 5 or $10 average bet. So I hope this helps. I hope this answers the question, Clark. Thank you very much for sending it to me. And I hope everyone finds this interesting, enlightening, amusing, just plain fun. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We will catch you next time. Bye now. So, as I promised, I wanted to go over very briefly our uh, um, upcoming attempts at a third, a third test live stream. So what's happened so far, the first test live stream just flat didn't work. The problem that I had was a, a uh, 
was an equipment problem. I had an equipment problem in that the, the um, equipment that I was using to translate the camera into streamable video to the computer uh, required a, uh, a uh, better USB port than the, the computer I was using at the time. So that one just flat failed because it would not translate into the computer. The computer would not pick it up, would not read it, so I wasn't able to live stream it. So then as I was looking through, because I'm a little bit of a, a tech head, as I was looking through all of my other stuff, because I do have, have uh, four laptops here and three computers, um, I did find one that actually did have the newer style USB port. Unfortunately, it was actually my oldest laptop, but I figured what the heck, let me give it a shot. What's the worst that can happen? And this time around, when I fired everything up, the video was actually translating onto the computer, so things were looking better. But then when I attempted to live stream, the computer was not powerful enough to be able to translate it and then upload it sufficiently. So it basically just uploaded a blank screen for the, the live stream. So what I am going to have to do is, and I'm already looking into all of my options, I'm going to upgrade my computer. So I can add, what, a seventh, eighth computer to my household? <laughs> um, and I'm going to go much, much higher, and I'm going to get a computer that is far more than I need for this, far, far, far more powerful than I need for this. That way, any future upgrades that I may do, the computer will be able to handle it. Um, so unfortunately, this, this computer is going to cost me about 25% uh, more, about 25% of what I've already laid out in, uh, in all the equipment for, uh, for this channel. So. Uh, it wasn't something I could just instantly buy. I'm probably looking at Black Friday or Cyber Monday. So hopefully I have it within the next couple of weeks and then I'll do another test live stream and, and see if I can go from there. So um, I will definitely do at least one weekly live stream on our Patreon uh, because they're the ones that are, are really helping us uh, <laughs> get this computer. Um, and the other equipment that I'm, I'm going to get, because I figure if I'm buying the computer, I might as well buy the most high-end capture cards and, and things along those lines, get everything as, as uh, good as possible, and then hopefully eventually get a uh, better microphone for you guys. Um, so yeah, that's where we stand on the live stream. As soon as I have the computer and I do the test, which will be in a few weeks, uh, like I said, I've got to order it in a week or two, then I have to wait for it to ship, plus we have probably the biggest event of the year coming up, the NFR National Finals Rodeo. So I'm basically working two weeks straight, as is, uh, as is my wife. So not going to have a whole lot of time. Uh, but once we get all that under control, then, uh, then we'll figure out there's been some schedule changes to myself, some schedule changes to my wife, and some upcoming schedule changes to my wife as well. So hopefully we can get all the scheduling figured out so I know when I'll be able to live stream as well. Uh, my initial plan of Thursdays at 6 o'clock is already out the window. I'm at work at that point uh, now. So we will get it all figured out, and we will let you guys know, I promise. And uh, otherwise, I hope you guys have found this interesting, enlightening, illuminating, or at least just plain fun. And we will catch you guys next time. Bye now.